signed into law a gun safety measure that bans the possession of large capacity magazines inside of city limits. This ordinance prohibits the ownership of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. The measure was introduced by Los Angeles City Councilman Paul Krikorian and passed in July. When a shooter has to stop and reload, those are precious seconds that can actually result in the preservation of lives that otherwise are lost. That allows law enforcement to get on the scene, it allows for them to stop the shooter, it allows people to go on living. The mayor also announced the expansion of the New Generation Fund, which will bring an additional $50 million to create, preserve, and retrofit affordable housing in the city. The fund offers pre-development and acquisition funding through a public-private partnership between the city and a group of banks and community development financial institutions. The mayor, who is working with the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department, said that the public and private sectors must work together to preserve and expand affordable housing. Since its 2008 inception, the New Generation Fund has provided nearly $70 million for the construction and preservation of more than 1,300 affordable apartments. City Council member Paul Coretz and the L.A. County Natural History Museum kicked off BioBlitz L.A., an effort intended to explore and document plant and wildlife in L.A. Dozens of volunteer citizen scientists will be trained to photograph and share the animals they find on social media so the scientists at the museum can better understand the different species that live within the human ecosystem to better protect their environment. It is vital to catalog the plants and animals with whom we share Los Angeles so we know what else we have to lose if we don't take climate change action more quickly. The Department of Recreation and Parks, Councilman Mitchell Englander, and community members held a ribbon-cutting ceremony for the newly renovated Lazy J Ranch Park Playground in West Hills. The aging playground in the San Fernando Valley has been revamped and now features modern play equipment, accessible ramps, merry-go-round, bucket seat swing areas, and rubberized surfacing. Four large shade canopies have also been added to the play area, creating desirable shade for children during hot summer months. A seasoned artist gives us a glimpse into his unique creations. The rhythmic sounds of a Colombian duo soothe the soul and a controversial musical that targets presidential assassins. That's all in this week's Things to Do. An installation time-lapse video showcases artist Joseph Holtzman's creation at the Hammer Museum. A selection of Holtzman's recent works from 2006 to 2011 is on view now in a space designed by the artist. Drawing upon several decades of his experience as a designer, editor, and trend center, Holtzman created a site-specific environment at the Hammer that illuminates the artist's unique aesthetic. The exhibit is on display through September 20th at the Hammer Museum, located at 10899 Wilshire Boulevard. For more, visit hammer.ucla.edu. Journey through space and time with Lula Cruza, the South American duo boldly embracing the intersection of electronic and folk music traditions. Lula Cruza has been on an 18-city tour through the U.S., traveling throughout the Pacific Northwest and West Coast. On August 22nd, they'll be closing out the tour in L.A. at the beautiful Terragram Ballroom with the human experience, Sorne and the Dirty Diamond. This is a rare opportunity to catch Lula Cruza while they're in the U.S., Hailing from Colombia and Argentina, their raw performances have garnered a reputation for transporting audiences with their intimate, meditative qualities. Check them out at the Terragram Ballroom located at 1234 West 7th Street. For more, visit lulacruza.com. Disturbing, alarming, and eerily funny, Assassins is perhaps one of the most controversial musicals ever written. Stephen Sondheim, the great genius of contemporary musical theater, with standout shows such as Sweeney Todd, Into the Woods, and Company, leads audiences on a tuneful review of presidential assassins and would-be killers from John Wilkes Booth to John Hinckley. Thought-provoking and darkly delightful, Assassins won five Tony Awards in its first revival on Broadway. 
It's been described as dark, demented humor, as horrifying as it is hilarious. The curtain goes up starting August 22nd and runs through September 27th at the Pico Playhouse, located at 10508 West Pico Boulevard. For more, visit assassinsmusicalla.com. And that's a look at some things to do. It's back to school for many kids, and most will be picking up school supplies with their parents. But one program in South L.A. has the kids spending quality time shopping with a cop. Anna Marcos takes us on the shopping spree. These kids from South L.A.'s 77th Street Division are ready to go shop with a cop. We're going to have a lot, of, a lot of fun inside and get you ready for school. So everybody ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. And with that, the kids head into a local staples store. Box of colored pencils, two yellow highlighters, pencil sharpener, erasers, more erasers. The Shop with a Cop event helps kids buy school supplies they might not otherwise get. They were picked as the kids most in need from among the junior cadet sharks, an LAPD program at the 77th Street Station, which teaches kids discipline and leadership, as well as new relationships with those who hold a badge and gun. Junior Cadet Sharks, who's captain of 77th Street? Captain Falco! South Los Angeles is very busy, it has a tendency to have a, a lot of crime. These kids are exposed to things that most kids in the United States do not see. And to give them the opportunity to have a positive experience with a Los Angeles police officer is just a wonderful thing. Uh, the kids love it. The police officers love it. I feel excited be because we, we're, we're going to get free stuff. The kids each get a brand new school backpack and a $100 gift card. So what does $100 buy? I got paper clips. I got color pencils, 36 pack, white out. Well, I asked Josh what he would want if he could choose anything in the store, and he chose to get some white out. White out? Okay, good. Yeah, we all make mistakes. <laughs> but some kids know what they really want, gummy worms. You got to have candy, right? Money for the school supplies comes back. from a private donor, but the officers pay out of their own pockets if the kids go over budget. And with that, the kids are prepped and ready for a brand new school year. The officers hope to do it all again next school semester. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. A total of 25 kids got to shop with a cop. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at L.A. This Week, thanks for joining us. We leave you now with some photos of the Watts riots taken by LAFD photographers. Most of them have never been seen publicly. The negatives were discovered in the City Records Center last year and are now preserved in the city archives. We'll see you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week. physical encounter occurs between man and machine, the machine always wins. Please, don't lose. Obey all the rules of the road. Don't let me make the same mistake again. Hi, I'm 
I'm Kevin from Chatsworth, offering you a taste of New Orleans since 1986. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is shh. Today is Tuesday, August 18th. Uh, welcome to your Los Angeles City Council. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. The public is welcome. Madam Clerk, we do, do have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Inglander, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Wezar, Kress, Krikori, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 11 members present in a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, you know what, um, Harris Dawson, you know what, Mr. Harris Dawson, you're the only one of us that have two last names, so you got to give one up. Because <laughs> anyway, second order of business. Approval the minutes. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Koretz uh, moves and Krikorian seconds next. Committed to resolutions for approval. Uh, Mr. Bonin moves, price seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, today is Tuesday. Now be the time for the flag salute. Okay, I think we'll ask our new father, Mr. Mike Bonin, to lead us in the flag salute for today. Mr. Bonin. Thank you, Mr. President. If everybody could please place their hand over their hearts. Ready? Begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bonin. Uh, why don't we run through the uh, agenda, Madam Clerk? Items 1 through 3 are items known for public hearing. The Department of Building and Safety reports that items 1C, D, and G may be received and filed in as much as the liens have been paid. Also, the Department reports request that items 1E and 1M be continued to September 1st. Okay, so without objection, that'll be the order. Do we have cards? Yes, cards on items 1 and 3. Okay, then let's vote on item 2. Let us open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, let's move to the next uh, section. I think that's items 4 through 20. Yes, items 4 through 20 are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay, members 4 through 20, specials. Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. President, item 7, special, please. 7 for Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. Rue. Oh, got it. Okay, so, the, uh, so both of you wanted 7 held. I don't see any other requests from members, so why don't we prepare to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll. Okay. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, next uh, section. Items 21 through 28 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. Do we have cards? Yes, cards on items 21, 23, and 27. Okay, let's hold those items. Mr. Bonin. 23. 23. And Mr. Bonin wanted 23 as well. Uh, members, any other specials? Let's prepare to vote on these items. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, that brings us where? And there's a request to send item 27 forthwith. So without objection, that'll be the order. Oh. On the supplemental agenda, item 29 is an item for which item notice for public hearing. And yeah, which item was that again? Item 29. And do we have cards? Before I get to Mr. Price, do we have cards on yeah, that? Yes, there's cards. And Miss, we'll hold that at Mr. Price. 29. You wanted to hold 29, 29 as well. Thank you. Okay, that brings us where? Item 30 is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. So again, without uh, objection, those items are now before us. And there are cards on that item. Okay, Excuse so me, that, Mr. that Mr. Englander. I believe on item 30, the cards, the uh, speakers were asking that they wish to pull them back. Um, which cards were submitted for that? Item 30. Uh, Miss Francisco, Gold, uh, Bond, and uh, Rosenheim. Um, there's, you're okay to pull those back? Okay, so they don't, no longer wish to speak, so we can take that item. 
No. Okay. So. So let's uh, prepare to vote on that item. Let us open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Thirteen ayes. Okay. That brings us where? Mr. President, that brings counsel to presentations or items called special. Mr. Blumenfield, Mr. Rue, would you guys be ready to move forward with your presentation? Yeah, I'm the second one. Yes. Or Mr. Rue and Mr. Rue. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a few weeks ago, more than 6,500 athletes from 165 countries completed the 2015 Special Olympics World Games, World Summer Games. These athletes demonstrated courage and dedication, and their joy for the games was felt across our city. Yet, despite the belief that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities receive better health care, they often do not. Through the Healthy Athletes Initiatives, Initiative, more than 136,000 healthcare professionals have been trained to treat people with intellectual disabilities. Since 1997, Healthy Athletes has conducted more than 1.6 million free health examinations in over 130 countries, and they serve year-round. During the 2015 Special Olympics World Games, Healthy Athletes provided over 70% of athletes' free health screenings, 4,000 with new shows, 600 new prescription glasses, and over 500 athletes with hearing aids, including eight members of the Nigerian basketball team who had never before heard the sound of their coaches' voices. Today, we're joined by Jeff Carr, the Chief Operating Officer of the 2015 World Games, Dustin Plunkett, an on-air announcer during the ESPN's coverage of the Games, along with volunteer and staff from Special Olympics Southern California. If we could give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Councilmember Blumenfeld and I, along with the entire council, extend our appreciation to all the health professionals who have dedicated their time, service, and expertise to caring for those with special needs. Thank you, and with that, I'd like to call Councilmember Bloomfield. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rue, for allowing me to join you in honoring the healthy athletes for their role in serving Special Olympic athletes during the 2015 World Games. There are 200 million people in the world with intellectual disabilities, and since 1968, these games have promoted the message of acceptance and inclusion of individuals with disabilities. I am so proud of the communities of Los Angeles who hosted the competitors of the games, as well as the community organizations such as Healthy Athletes, who stepped up to the plate to support these athletes, more than 7,000 of them, in fact. Communities all over the city of Los Angeles stepped up to the plate to serve as host towns for the athletes in the summer games. In my district, you might think it's so far flung from downtown where most of the games were that they wouldn't. They embraced it. Not one, but four West Valley communities joined together to support our Special Olympic athletes. But there is another community that steps up every day. I'm speaking, of course, about the health care professionals trained by the Special Olympics and healthy athletes. As Councilmember Rue mentioned, during the recent Games, over 136,000 health care professionals came out to serve over 70 percent of the Special Olympic competitors, providing more than 4,000 athletes new shoes, 600 with new prescriptions for glasses, and over 500 with hearing aids. It really is spectacular when you think about all of these folks coming together to do what they did. And that's just a small part of the work that they did. They conducted more than 1.6 million free health examinations in over 130 countries since the organization was founded back in 1997. 
Many of these healthcare professionals have been shaped by someone with a disability. Uh, you recognize how special and unique these individuals are and how much they have impacted so many lives. I'm here to say thank you to all the healthcare professionals who gave their time and expertise to truly make a, a difference in people's lives. Uh, and I appreciate being part of this, being able to say thank you to those healthcare professionals. So again, thank you for healthy athletes and the professionals. At this time, I'd like to call someone who is no stranger to this building, Mr. Jeff Carr, Chief Operating Officer of the 2015 Summer Olympics. Thank you, Councilman uh, Ryu and Councilman Blumenfeld and all of you. I want to just, uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, our board, um, our nearly 400 employees and over 8,600 volunteers, I want to thank you for the way this city welcomed the Special Olympics. We are hearing lots of stories from around the world from delegations who returned to their countries and were literally treated um, as superstars when they got back. And I think that has a lot to do with how they were treated here when they were in Los Angeles. I think the best of Los Angeles came out. When we first won the bid uh, nearly five years ago, we had one singular focus, which was to, to create the awareness that would lead to more acceptance and inclusion of people with intellectual disabilities. And I think one of the great things about what happened in the last two weeks was that people from all over this city rallied around our athletes and people, families who have an intellectually disabled person in their family talked about for the first time they felt like they were really a part of Los Angeles, not as outsiders, but really as insiders. And I want to thank all of you for what you did in your own districts, for hosting host towns, for torch run events, um, for hosting the venues. It really was a spectacular event. And the Healthy Athletes Program, as was mentioned, ironically, Special Olympics is a sports event. But it tells you a little bit about the status of people with intellectual disabilities access to health care around the, around the world by the fact that Special Olympics is actually the largest provider of health care and health services for people with intellectual disabilities in the world. And I think the great thing that happened here was, as, as was mentioned, thousands of doctors here in Southern California for the first time actually were trained how to deal with people with intellectual disabilities. And we hope that the legacy of these games will be that more people with intellectual disabilities will have access to health care and health care professionals here in Southern California. And my colleagues behind me who actually um, made this happen really did a fantastic job. Um, Dr. Levi Harrison, who was the Healthy Athletes Medical Director. And the thing is, we have an opportunity for a legacy is Special Olympics Southern California here um, serves almost 20,000 athletes. The goal is to double that over the next two or three years. And we hope that uh, Los Angeles and residents here will help us make that possible. And with that, I'd like to introduce um, Dustin Plunkett, who's one of our athletes. Uh, he's on the, the Games Organizing Committee board. And as was mentioned, he was selected by ESPN to be an on-air analyst for the games. And Dustin specifically uh, has an experience and uh, is his involvement in healthy athletes that really was transformative. And I'd like him to say a few words and share his experience. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, thank you, Councilmember Bloomfield and uh, Reno for honoring our health professionals because without them, our athletes would not get screenings that we much needed because a lot of times during these games, a lot of the athletes who went through the screenings were their first time ever seeing a doctor in their entire lives. Um, and this program really saved my life 11 years ago. I went and I got my teeth screened by a volunteer dentist, and he said, Dustin, your teeth are in really bad shape and you need to go get follow care right away. Where my coach who took me to this program, he takes me to his dentist, and I get screening done on my teeth. And um, he comes back in the room after looking at the x-rays and said, Dustin, brace yourself. I have some bad news for you, but don't worry about it. I know how to fix it. And he goes on to tell me that I had gum cancer forming the upper left of my mouth. And if it would have went one more month longer, I wouldn't be alive today sharing my million dollar smile with the world. <laughs> and that just shows you how many lives through this program over the week of the games was saved and changed because of this program. So thank you so much for putting this program in the forefront of your guys' eyes and in the forefront of Los Angeles to see what truly health care professionals can do for people with intellectual disabilities. Thank you. With that said, on behalf of the Los Angeles City Council, I'd like to give you this proclamation.
Let's give him another round of applause. And Jeff, it was a great show. It truly was a great show and very enjoyable. Thank you for all of your hard work. Okay, let's uh, quickly move. And again, I want to thank uh, Mr. Rue and Mr. Blumenfield for putting that together. So if we could uh, move to item one, uh, I need a, uh, I think it's a Ruhai Wigan, uh, John Walsh and Donna Pierman on item one. Please come forward. Please come forward. Let's go, Mr. Walsh. You put up five ropes. I'm not jumping over them. Just stay uh, on John the John uh, Walsh, supper. blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or J. Walsh Confidential, uh, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, here we are at Building and Safety, a uh, list of the liens, nuisance abatement costs. Uh, this, uh, it, remember, you have any problems in your, uh, uh, if you're a renter, complain to the city, and the city usually takes good action. Occasionally they make mistakes. We uh, rectify them when the landowners come. This is West Vernon, South Glendon, uh, North Woodman, uh, these are a great number of them, and uh, when you do a good job, uh, we salute you. When you do a bad job, uh, we give you a thumb on the nose. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay. Ms. Pierman, and do we have a, a Ruhai? Okay, can I speak or? Go ahead. Okay, I think this is a really good idea. This is Eric Garcetti. Anyway, I think this is, I, I'm going to look at this, and maybe we, you know, we need a lot of revenue over there in, um, in Los Angeles for our city council. So maybe, you know, we, uh, I think we really should get maybe all these lanes paid, you know, because these people are just using it on silly things like food and utilities, things they're going to use over and over again. So, you know, we need the revenue for Los Angeles. So let's get these, um, let's get these lanes. Matter of fact, I think we should even increase them. So, because we need the revenue in Los Angeles so that we can have the money for the developers and special projects. And so the developers can have their string of polo ponies. Yeah, so I think this is a very good idea. So let's do it. And I'm going to leave it down to one minute, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, so again, Aruhai, Wigan, Wigan. Okay, that uh, concludes public comment on this item. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Excuse me, Mr. President, there's a request to reconsider item 1K. Okay, so without objection, that'll be, no applause, without objection, that'll be the... Uh, the, the order, let's vote on reconsideration. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. Four, 14 ayes. And there's a request to continue this item until tomorrow. Okay, so that item will be continued until uh, tomorrow. That's August so that, 19th. August 19th, that brings us to item uh, 21, I believe. So if I could have uh, Mr. Walsh. And Ms. Pierman, please come forward on item 21. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. This is the uh, REAP rent escrow account program. Remember uh, when you, uh, these, uh, there are one, two, three, 
Uh, three of them here. You have any code violations in your apartment? Report them to your um, uh, to your manager. If they're not uh, remedied in a certain uh, short period of time, then uh, automatically they're going to go to uh, REAP, and your landlord isn't going to get your rent anymore. You know, he's going to get the rent, the city, until the landlord uh, uh, remedies the problem. And of course, uh, landlords west of La Brea are exempt from this. Landlords east of La Brea, uh, this is a part of the uh, wall down in La Brea that separates blacks and minorities from wealthy whites. Mr. Pierman. I was going to speak on it, but um, a lot of people have problems over there and reap, and not just uh, poor minorities. And uh, we have to think about there's a lot of white people, uh, Caucasian people, that are also having problems. And so that uh, we got to have it so that uh, reap doesn't get from. Of course, I can probably say that, you know, if not, then you can get some more revenue. So. Uh, so, because the developers, uh, the people who own these apartment buildings, think of the poor, these people who have these poor apartment buildings, the people that are fleecing the people from these uh, REAP projects. So, anyway, I'm going to keep this down to uh, one minute, but uh, let's not make this about race. Let's uh, think about all the poor people, and let's not go uh, and try to get money from... Uh, the people who, um, the richer people who own the buildings, but if they're poor, I mean, if they're lower, that's okay. Thank you. Mr. Kokorian. I've been so Did blessed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. When it's appropriate, I'd like to ask that item 1E be reconsidered, please, okay, so that we'll we do can it. request a two-week extension. We'll do it right after this. Okay, so let's uh, vote on this item. Let's open the row, close the row, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, the item requested by Mr. Kikorian. Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, that item was already continued to September 1st. Oh, it was? Yes. One eye. Okay, so it's one eye that we're going to vote on reconsideration for. So on one eye, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. And the request is a two weeks uh, continuance, which would bring us to what day? September 1st. September 1st. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bonin, I, would you want to do item 23? Sure. Yeah. Then let's do it. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, I do have a few cards. You want to take them first, or you want to open up and then take the cards? I'll open up, then we can take the cards. Okay. Since I'm already standing. Uh, colleagues, this morning I'm asking us to, to stand up and to lend our voice against an increasing assault on health care, on women, and against reproductive freedom. As many of us know, in Washington, we have a Republican Congress, and we have conservative activists who have launched a war on health care. They have launched a war on women, and they have launched a war on poor people. And this is a, an attempt to do all three at once. There is a war going on, consistent attacks against Planned Parenthood. Here in Los Angeles alone, Planned Parenthood is the largest provider of reproductive health care services in Los Angeles County. It provides health services to nearly 150,000 women, men, and teens in LA County each year. 93% of whom come to Planned Parenthood for family planning services, and 77% of whom are at or below the federal poverty level. Planned Parenthood's professionals offer safe and affordable, convenient health care services at 20 health centers located uh, around the, the area, including two Planned Parenthood basics throughout Los Angeles County. Planned Parenthood LA's education and outreach programs deliver sexuality and family planning education to more than 78,000 teens, women and men, every year. They have programs for middle and high school students about responsible sexuality, parent and child communication courses, and teen education programs. 
their, some of their affiliates work with research centers that conduct life-saving and cutting-edge research intended to cure heart disease, some form of cancer, Alzheimer's, and other genetic diseases. It is important that Los Angeles stand up for its residents, those who need health care, those who need the services of Planned Parenthood, and I ask us today to stand with them and stand up against the egregious assault uh, on women and on people in need of health care. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonnet. Now we'll hear the cards. Uh, Celinda Vasquez, please come forward, uh, followed by Mr. Walsh, and followed by Ms. Pierman. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Council President and members. My name is Celinda Vasquez, and I'm here on behalf of Planned Parenthood. Today, I come before you in strong support and gratitude of your proposed resolution, We Support Planned Parenthood. As Council Member Bonin mentioned, we are the nation's most trusted reproductive health care provider, and more than 90% of the care we provide is preventive, including life-saving cancer screenings, birth control, and testing and treatment for STIs. For 50 years, Planned Parenthood Los Angeles has been helping women, men, and youth in need. We are the largest provider in the city and in the county of reproductive health care services with over 150,000 patients in 20 health centers. The most recent attacks on Planned Parenthood have been a broad and consistent pattern of anti-women's health zealots to interfere with women's personal decision making and to take away affordable health care. Opponents of women's health care have failed to make abortion illegal, so instead they're putting it out there far out of reach for too many women targeting clinics who provide this care. These false accusations being made over the last few weeks are yet another attack on women's health, attempting to discredit, harass, and stigmatize women and providers. It's unfortunate that some members in Congress are using this attack on Planned Parenthood to push legislation that would take away funding for women's health care. Taking away funding from Planned Parenthood means millions could lose access to their trusted high quality provider. This falls hardest on low income women, people of color, and young people. Many people turn to Planned Parenthood as their only source of health care. We know that in Los Angeles, thanks to your support, we embrace our responsibility as leaders in reproductive health care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. Of course, we're against any uh, reduction in funding for uh, uh, right here for Planned Parenthood. But let, let's realize what happened. You got caught on video trafficking in fetal arms and legs. And the woman there, she's fressing. That means in Yiddish. She's eating. She has her mouth stuffed. And she's saying, well, I'll sell you this and I'll sell you that. I'll sell you the body. body, body, body. Look, it was disgusting. It was despicable. And next time Planned Parenthood, pat down anybody who says they're going to give you money for spare body parts because they might be some right-wingers. And I'm telling you right now, if you want to redeem yourself, you'll stop selling fetal baby parts. Disgusting, vile, vicious, and 100 percent. Why do you hate women, Mr. Bonin? <laughs> Ms. Pierman. The Republicans that are against us, I listen to this uh, heritage, and they say they're very much against the uh, selling of the body parts and for what the, these, uh, the, uh, the ba I mean, babies, fetuses. And uh, the white wingers are not for this area. They're very much against it. I listen to it every Monday, and they're against the Planned Parenthood. So, uh, and please let uh, Wayne Spindler talk. No, uh, let, he had no his you're off there. subject. Thank so, you. Anyway, Thank you. So no, Donna, you're off subject. Donna, uh, your time is over. Thank you. No, Turner's time off. Sergeant's her time is over. Stay on the subject. You're not on the subject, Donna. Okay, now we have Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman.
Resolution of Bonin and Martinez, then the Bloomfield E.T., relative to establishing the city's position regarding legislation that would remove funding from the health care services, the bastards. The accompanying resolution by Bonin and little Mary Martinez, isn't she so sweet? And Bloomfield again to support a Planned Parenthood mission to provide important health care. Fuck health care. It did nothing for me. What the hell? We need better health care, not services. Something that is actually going to pay for my rights to have health care in America. I'm an American. And I'm not a non-compliance asshole who doesn't provide insurance for people like me. I'm an American. Don't bang on the uh, podium. What the hell with you, little Hitler? What okay, your time is up. And you're disrupting the meeting. Again, Mr. Uh, Herman, do it again, and we have a special place for you. All right, now, All right. let me know. That's, there you are again, disrupting the meeting. Sergeants, let's have one discussion with him. If he does it again, then he goes outside. Mr. Spindler? You're doing it again, Mr. Don't Herman. Don't no, no, him. stop his don't time. Don't Mr. Herman, get out. Take him out. He can't. You ask him not to disturb. He sits up there in that whining voice again after you were asked three times. Please escort him out of the council chambers. Okay, Mr. Spindler, it's your time. Don't, don't, no, hold, don't hold again. Hold don't again, they told him. me. Wait. Wait, Mr. Spindler. Okay, go ahead. You're being you're being disrupted again. No, take uh, uh, take it was you take him uh, outside. You're again disrupting the meeting. No, uh, sergeants, help him. He is continually dis uh, disrupting the meeting, Mr. City Attorney. For the record, he's still yelling as he's exiting the meeting. Yes, he is. Okay, Mr. Spindler. On the item. Okay, don't shoot. You're uh, not on the item. Come to, on. For Nuri Martinez, thank you for p your Planned Parenthood. And that's what we need. Planned Parenthood is so good because, for example, Planned Parenthood, in 50 plus percent of all black women in New York City who result in an abortion of all pregnancies, Planned Parenthood is taking the young body parts of little worthless infants and cutting them up and selling them for pieces, which is good because that research from those body parts is going to allow the 1% to live to 200 years. Yay! So that's why we need Planned Parenthood because... We have to take the fetuses and chop, 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 chop them up and sell their body parts so that the 1% can find a way to live to 200 years. And that's what Planned Parenthood likes. So, Nuri and oh, Bonin, oh, yes, supporter of PERM. Yes, PERM is a good thing, too, because they can give out free tablets to prevent AIDS, and that allows them to have sex without condoms, to, to have better anal sex. So that's another good thing about Planned Parenthood. But those evil Republican bastards, how dare them oppose the chopping up of body parts of, of, ch of little infants and children. Nuri's a mother, and Nuri knows that chopping up body parts of fetuses is a good thing. So support it. Thank you. Your time is done. Okay, that, uh, Mr. Bloomingfield. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in strong support of this motion. was happy to, to join Mr. Bonin in, in making it. Def defunding Planned Parenthood means that the residents would lose access to a range of quality reproductive health services. Let make no mistake about it. 
Planned Parenthood is the largest provider of reproductive health care services in Los Angeles. And an attack on Planned Parenthood and the, and the folks who are served by it is an attack on Angelinos. And we shouldn't stand for that. Too often we've seen these attacks on Planned Parenthood. I know I've been in the trenches with Planned Parenthood for years on these issues. When Schwarzenegger was trying to cut the, uh, the FPAC money, and it defies all logic because we get a nine to one uh, ratio of money back on every dollar that we spend, and it was still, let's cut Planned Parenthood. Sometimes it defies logic. People don't look at Planned Parenthood and, and, and see what we're getting for those dollars and the amazing amount of services we're getting. They get caught up and embroiled in, uh, in these bigger political issues. And so I, I know that we need, I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues, uh, with the council, and to say no. We should not defund Planned Parenthood. We should stand up for Planned Parenthood. We know they're not only valuable for our Angelinos, but it's a great value for our dollar as well. So I strongly support Planned Parenthood, and I urge uh, all of us to endorse this resolution. Stop, Mr. Spindler. You're disrupting the meeting. Mr. Harris Dawson. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I rise in, uh, in support of uh, Planned Parenthood. I wanted to make a special note of how important the services that Planned Parenthood offers are to uh, low-income African-Americans and Latinos, especially folks who are undocumented. Uh, they opened up a clinic uh, what used to, in what used to be the 8th District and is now the 9th uh, on Broadway at a time when no one was providing health services for young women. And, and to uh, have their organization undermined in any way or mischaracterized in any way as a direct attack on our communities and the health of, of women throughout not just my community but the city, the state, and the country. So we uh, hope that we get a unanimous support uh, for this organization and on this item. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Ms. Martinez. Um. Thank you, Mr. President. I actually want to stand and uh, not only support Planned Parenthood, but really commend Mr. Bonin. Uh, I think he's uh, an incredible, courageous leader and fighter for women's rights. And thank you very much for bringing this resolution forward. But it, it, honestly, it's almost old already that we continue to have this conversation on the assault and attack on women in this country. So, Mr. Bonin, thank you for standing uh, with communities like the ones I represent who will actually get impacted by the defunding of Planned Parenthood. Because by law, federal dollars cannot be used to perform abortions in this country. And so the assault on Planned Parenthood only means that you're going to scale back on cancer screenings and breast exams and that kind of resources that communities like mine desperately need. So again, Mr. Bonin, kudos to you uh, for being a, a trailblazer and an amazing leader um, for women's rights on this council. Thank you very much. Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think most of what needs to be said has already been said about this fine organization, but I just wanted to point out um, when my nephew was visiting, who just left uh, this morning, actually, um, we were discussing Planned Parenthood, and he pointed out to me on, on the net that you can find um, a, a supposed list of fetal organs that you can buy from Planned Parenthood. You know, $50 for a heart and $25 for a liver. I mean, there, there is so much false information that is being put out there um, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Bond and the others who have brought this forward um, because I think we absolutely, as a city, need to contradict this absolutely false, false information that is being perpetuated far and wide and uh, leading to this whole effort to discredit the organization. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bonin, uh, to, to close, or we can just go on and... Okay, so uh, with that said, Madam Clerk, if you'd please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, now we'll move on. To item three. Okay, item three. So I have uh, Javier Cano, 
uh, Michael Sheminsky, Peter Kwan, please come forward. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Javier Cano, and I'm the general manager of the JW Merritt, the Ritz Carlton down the street. Uh, I'm also the chair of the Tourism Marketing District. And uh, I am here today uh, to speak in favor of this district. Uh, we've been very fortunate that over the past four years, we've had tremendous rise in tourism in our city. And a lot has been done through the efforts and the money that's been raised through the creation of this district. We have now had the opportunity to go out into a lot of markets outside of Los Angeles that we previously had not had the opportunity to do so. Uh, these dollars have brought tourism here, brought spend here, people into all of the different parts of Los Angeles. Recently, we had the opportunity to come here and speak to you about the videos that we've created to be able to highlight the different areas of Los Angeles, to be able to let people see other parts that they typically don't get a chance to do so. Uh, it has been a game changer for us here in Los Angeles, and uh, I thank you very much for your continued support of tourism and your support of the renewal of our district. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Michael? Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Charchinsky. I'm the general manager of the Weston Bonaventure and also the chairman of the Hotel Association of Los Angeles. Uh, number one, I thank you all for the uh, past support of the Tourism Marketing District and then the support for renewing the Tourism Marketing District. As Javier just mentioned, uh, this helps us uh, with our marketing regionally, um, in the state of California, nationally and internationally. Tourism is a huge driver of our local economy, and I cannot thank you enough for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. I'm Peter Kwong, and uh, thank you for giving us this time to uh, speak to the chambers here. Uh, I own the Best Western Plus Dragon Gate in, Ch in Chinatown, just down the street, and also the Royal Pagoda Motel, also in Chinatown. I am the chairman of the Los Angeles Hotel Owners Association here for the, for the city, as well as I'm on the board of the LATCBB. Um, I was one of the original people who were against this um, program, but now I fell in love with it. I've seen business rise over and over, breaking all kinds of records for the city of Los Angeles. As my colleagues spoke in the past, uh, things are doing really well here, but I represent the mid-sized properties and the smaller size properties for Los Angeles, not just the big high-rises you see next to LA Live, but the impact has been incredible for all hotels, not just the large hotels, but the smaller ones included. So I appreciate the support of the city, and I hope to continue with this program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If I could have Mr. Spindler followed by Mr. Walsh. Well, the hotel seems to like it, and uh, if, if people voluntarily want to tax themselves, that's okay, because you're giving the people that own the properties the option of supporting it or declining it. So I'm assuming that every hotel with 50 or more rooms in this district is on board with this. Now, none of these hotel owners were pressured into supporting this or remaining silent, were they? No, of course not. That could never happen in this city because this city is fair and nobody would ever be threatened not to support something that Herb Wesson wants and the council wants. So I don't hear any objections. So let's support item number three for the hotel tax. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh and HollywoodHighlands.org. Vote no if you have 50 or more rooms. Let me tell you right now, the city, downtown, the whole city, crime rules the street. We are in the middle of a, that's why you should vote no. We're in the middle of a serial race riot in this city. Race 
riot. That's why we don't. That's the reason the Olympic is not coming here because they're afraid if they come here there'll be a race riot Let's during get the Olympics. Back on the subject. That's why we are saying do not vote for tourism marketing district because you will you're wasting your money when race rioting is inevitable with racists running the city hollywoodhighlands.org okay mr price thank you mr president I, I too want to stand in support of the la tourism marketing board uh, they do a great job uh, in leveraging limited resources. We know that uh, these are private sector investments uh, uh, to, to benefit not only these businesses, not only to our downtown, but really benefits the whole city. So I just appreciate the collaboration, public sector, private sector, uh, uh, business owners, property owners stepping up to the plate uh, and really uh, um, demonstrating that uh, working together works. And so I, I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Madam Clerk, you wanted to make a statement? Yes, the tabulation of the valid written protest received does not amount to a majority protest as defined by Section 366.23b of the California Streets and Highways Code. Therefore, the ordinance established in the district may be adopted by the City Council. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. And there's a request to send this item forthwith. Ms. Martinez, without objection. Okay, we're going to go to item 27. We do have cards on item 27. Mr. Uh, Walsh. Donna Pierman, no applause. Mr. Spindler and Antonia Ramirez, Ms. Ramirez, please come forward. John Walsh, J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Skid Row community, you've let it go. Let it go. It's, it's uh, but because uh, there are no white people there, so uh, you, you're letting, uh, it, it's turning into uh, a fourth world country. Uh, but the number one thing is, this is redevelopment project money. Remember, we destroyed the redevelopment project. It doesn't exist anymore. What happened to all the money that they were collecting in the past three years? Instead, it's state tax, not going to redevelopment anymore. It's going to the cities, the counties, and the school districts. And how much money of diverted, I found on the internet, diverted tax increments so far? 6.3 billion, with billion dollars, we put in the city and the county and the education system and away from the redevelopment project. That's what we did. And Jerry Brown, HollywoodHighlands.org. Next speaker, Donna Pierman. Per Let's hear it for the developers. So, uh, yeah, we got it uh, over there, over the skid row. We could spend this $200,000. We could have great uh, used money for the developers because we know the developers need the money over there. They may be able to have their special, uh, they may be able to go to the Swiss Alps and, um, and Ramuda for lunch. <laughs> yeah, they, and they need to have their string of polo ponies and water polo. So um, I think that uh, the developers and these uh, over these affordable housing where uh, only a small portion of it is affordable housing and the great big portion is used for the, um, the developers. So I think this is, sounds like a good idea because after all, the city council wants revenue and all they care about is revenue to the city. So 
Let's go. It's good. Next speaker, Wayne Spindler. Sorry, Mrs. Ramirez, you're next after Mr. Spindler, okay? Yes, now we have CD14. Oh, that's our good friend, Jose Weezar. And once again, he's, he's taking money, stealing it from the 1% giving it back to the 1%, and a couple of dollars will go out to handouts for the skid row and the poor. See, none of the money goes towards the poor. It's just on paper. Money is paper. Bonds are paper. So I can't really, I can't understand a fucking thing what, what any of this means, that laha going to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And uh, I, I don't know what it means, AB 1290. I, I don't read the newspaper because it costs too much to buy now. But anyway, Weezar always wins. CD14 is his kingdom. So you'll have to support it. Oh, well. Mrs. Ramirez. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a health and welfare and public safety crisis in Skid Row. For any of you who have not walked through Skid Row, I have many times. You see a, com a combination of mostly African Americans, Africans, Haitians, Jamaicans, and Latino wetbacks and gangbangers. They look happy, man. They're sitting on boxes, counting their dough. They do their drug dealings, and they look happy. Uh, happier than most of us here anyway um, they look comfortable and happy so they have a combination of MRSA scabies bed bugs staph infections kissing diseases encephalitis meningitis they are chronic thieves drug addicts violent offenders gang stalkers and homicidal terrorists um, taking ID th uh, IDs um, licenses and all that stuff so before you engage in helping these people I say leave them there because they are a threat to our society or our civilized society. And you know what's even more ironic? A lot of the black people complain that nobody helps these African Americans, yet you don't see Africans walking in there or African Americans. You certainly don't see the scumbag Mark Ridley Thomas walking in there. You don't see several of your political black leaders in there. You know who you see in there? You see the white folks going in there to help feed these blacks and Latina and wetbacks and gangbangers. You don't see blacks and you don't see Latinos you, uh, that go in there to help. You see white folks, not black folks. It ain't Mark Ridley Thomas. You know, he's a pussy. But you see white folks, white kids and white folks. I stood there taking pictures and looking and saying, look, look how the blacks and all these Latinos talk about the racism and discrimination. Yet it's always the white folks that go in and help. God bless the white folks. So I say... You got a crisis here. I certainly don't want to deal with this because when they leave the skid row and go into the Grand Park bathrooms, they rob, destroy, and you got to watch for your things, ladies. They are violent offenders. Many of them are mental, but a lot of them are vicious. Be careful. Um, God bless Donald Trump and God bless Thank America. Thank you, Mrs. Ramirez. That concludes uh, cards on this, on this item, Madam Clerk. Open the row. Close the row. Tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. And there's a request item. to send this item forthwith. Forthwith, thank you very much. Next item, item seven. Item seven, call special by council members O'Farrell and Rue. Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Colleagues, what is before us is an ordinance strengthening the penalties for illegal tobacco sales to minors. Uh, for the better part of a year, uh, my office has been working with the city attorney's office uh, and just earlier this year in February, uh, this council unanimously supported moving the motion forward uh, that strengthens those penalties. It came before my Arts Parks Committee, uh, and the uh, ordinance uh, has been fine-tuned and finalized and came before uh, Mr. Rue's Public Safety, I'm sorry, Public Health Committee uh, just this last week where it passed unanimously. Colleagues, what this does uh, is, is the following. There are 4,768 tobacco retailers in the city of Los Angeles. Um, according to California Public Health, 
7.6% uh, of all tobacco retailers in the state of California um, were observed unlawfully selling tobacco products to minors. In the city of Los Angeles, that rate is 24%. 24 uh, percent. And something also worth noting is that uh, 64 percent of adults who smoke started smoking before the age of 18. What this uh, ordinance aims to do is bring Los Angeles into the same level of compliance uh, and enforcement that other cities across the state currently have. Uh, and I'm very confident that this will go a long way in reducing um, those numbers for uh, Los Angeles youth, which could, if we achieve the kind of goals that I think that we're setting here, could result in preventing up to 1,200 uh, minors per year from becoming addicted to tobacco uh, and nicotine. 1,200 Los Angeles youth per year uh, we could be helping their lives. Um, I want to not just think the work th uh, that my staff has done over the past year, Star Parsemian, uh, chief among them. But I also want to thank from the city attorney's office, who are here, I understand, I see them right there. We have Selena Porras, uh, Nora Manzanilla, and I don't know if David Michelson is here, but I really want to thank this collaboration working with the city attorney's office um, and really thank um, my colleagues, uh, who all of you who have supported this every step of the way. Um, and let's, uh, I ask for a, a unanimous I vote, and let's get ourselves back in the business of protecting our youth from the dangers of uh, nicotine addiction. It will increase the public health of all of our families. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, this item, Madam Clerk, public comment has been satisfied for this item, so we will um, file the cards. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Forthwith for Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you. On item Thanks, seven. Mr. Bonin for an announcement. Uh, th thank you very much, Madam President. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, some of my summer interns who are here with us today. If they could please stand. Stand up, guys. Uh, with me today are Erica Lang, Robert Tran, Ali Hovsepian, Allison Feinswag, Justin Bleeker, and Andrew Bonema. Uh, they have staffed me in the district, they've staffed me at City Hall, they've staffed me at Metro, and they have done incredible and above par professional, exceptional service. Just want to thank you all for what you've done. Thank you. Madam Clerk, let's move on to item 29. Item 29, call special by Councilmember Price and for cards. Mr. Price. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, members, uh, today I'm asking you to oppose a finding of public necessity and, and convenience of a conditional use permit located at 4000 South Broadway. Again, this is a quality of life issue uh, for us in the district. Uh, I cannot support uh, this location given the history of crime uh, and bad actors in the immediate vicinity. Shortly after taking office, I worked with, local, with the local community, uh, the LAPD, to, revo to revoke a conditional use permit uh, at another liquor store located down the street at 4200. Uh, after years of uh, plaguing the community uh, with considerable uh, uh, pain and considerable law enforcement resources spent there uh, regulating uh, alcohol-related crimes in the area, uh, this PUP was finally revoked. Uh, the community uh, sighed a, 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 a breath of relief. Um, the community has spoken again. They cannot support the sale of liquor in this area. The Zapata King uh, Neighbor Council amongst other organizations, has uh, opposed the issuance of this permit. Uh, and I certainly will defer to the LAPD, uh, who I understand it, are here to testify on this matter as well. So I ask for your vote in opposition uh, to this permit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. First Speaker Officer, Gerald Ballesteros. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Uh, since we did uh, work with uh, Councilman Price's office and before him, Jan Perry, to get rid of uh, Times Square liquor, uh, crime has significantly dropped in that area. Quality of life issues have also uh, improved. Uh, if this uh, liquor store does uh, were to open there, uh, I believe since we have a homeless shelter and 
a huge amount of homeless people encampments in the area, the amount of crime will uh, rise again. So I uh, support uh, Councilman Price in opposing this. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh, I'm sorry. I've been notified you're out of time, sir. Sorry about that. Next speaker, Donna Pierman. Oh, you're out of time too, Donna. Sorry about that. Okay. Mr. Spindler, you have one minute, sir, on item 29. It's a rarity, a councilman doing a good job, but he's doing it. This is the first time I can ever remember in the past five years that a councilman stood up to vote no on a liquor license, listening to the people that live in a community. It, it, it gives you a, a shimmer of hope and humanity that somebody's going to start turning this place around. The other 14 of you, especially you, Englander, should look at your Councilman Price and see what he's doing here, that he actually listened to his constituents, representing them on this item and doing what the people he represents wants. That happens one half of 1% here. But today, it's happened. It's a small miracle. So on this item, give him a hand. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Next speaker, Antonio Ramirez. Ladies and gentlemen, I would have to beg to differ. This is a First Amendment issue, and I think we're hijacking all our businesses. We are now asking our business personnel or owners to ask every individual in the residence if they have a drinking problem and so therefore we cannot sell liquor i think it's atrocious it's a draconian approach and we are stifling our businesses we are uh, we're hijacking them they can't have the freedom to sell what they want to sell that's what america was founded on freedom first amendment freedom so i would have to say no this is not acceptable in america now are you going to remove matches because they're dangerous are you going to remove matches from people because it's dangerous well what else Ladies and gentlemen, again, um, I say, please allow the businesses to sell liquor and then use another way to troubleshoot and keep these kids and drunks and boozers um, and stoners and potheads off of the booze. There's got to be a way. I don't know what it is. I don't drink. I don't know. I did drink once when I was a teenager, drank peppermint schnapps. I got puking sick. My mother threatened to call my dad, and then I stopped. I never again drank, and I'm, by the grace of God, thank you, God. So by the grace of God, I I do not drink. Thank you. Peppermint schnapps was sick, disgusting. Don't ever try it, kids. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to find an approach that is more equitable, suitable for businesses as well as the residents. Kids need to learn to say no to booze. You go to the liquor store, you see booze. Oh, nope, it's not for me. Maybe tequila, but that's not for me. Kidding. No tequila, man. Stay that. That crap is awful. Awful. So please, ladies and gentlemen, stay away. Teach your kids to say no. No to to booze, no to drugs. Please teach them. Have the balls to say no to that. You know, God bless Donald Trump and God bless the United States military and God bless America. A freedom, freedom, freedom. God bless America. Thank you, Mrs. Ramirez. Madam Clerk, that concludes cards on this item. There are no more members on the queue. Open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 eyes, 2 no. Uh, item passes. Thank so, you very much. So just, just, just to be Wait clear, a minute. what was before council was to deny the applications. So let's open the road, members, to reconsider the item. Item 29, okay. open the row, close the row, tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. 
Mr. Price is asking for a yes vote on this item to deny. Everyone clear? All right, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. Thank you. Madam Clerk, let's go on to public comment. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh at HollywoodHighlands.org. Congratulations, Mr. Price. You've shown your profile in courage. Now you can do it again. Last Wednesday at 1.14, this building was evacuated. The alarms went off. The antiquated system didn't work. We couldn't hear what... That's what we were hearing. We could not hear. Marquise Harris Dawson... I mean, you set an Olympic record. You got your ass out of here so damn fast. Now we're hearing it didn't happen. The LA Times is saying it didn't happen. There was not a fire alarm, and this building was not evacuated on Wednesday. And that is all a psychotic episode of myself. In fact, this system here is antiquated and our lives are in danger. And all you're interested in is keeping it quiet because it might hurt your Olympic chances. Next speaker, Bradley Hertz. Good morning, Bradley Hertz of the Sutton Law Firm on behalf of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation and Michael Weinstein. With me are several advocates from uh, AHF and uh, I'm here specifically to thank the five council members who have appointed members of the Health Commission and that's council members Krikorian, Koretz, Harris Dawson, Bonin and O'Farrell. Uh, I've had several conversations with others of you. I know you're in process, uh, but we do ask you to, to pick a representative and notify the city clerk so that this LA City Health Commission can move forward immediately. Thank you. Next speaker, Camilo Rosas, followed by David Cano and Mario Scott. If you guys can begin forming a line behind Mr. Rosas, please. So that was Camilo Rosas, David Cano, and Mario Scott. Buenos días, mi nombre es Camilo Rosas. Un momentito, le vamos a traer traducción. Okay. Translator. Uh, buenos días, mi nombre es Camilo Rosas. Good morning, my name is Camilo Rosas. Soy residente de Pacoima. I'm a resident of Pacoima. Y le quiero pedir al, conse al consejero Fuentes. And I want to ask Council Member Fuentes. Que por favor nombre a su comisionado. To please name a commissioner. Para que nos represente en la comisión de la salud de la ciudad. So they can represent, represent us in the commission of the health in the city. No existe ninguna razón para tomarse más de un año. There is no reason for you to take more than a year para poner a trabajar a la comisión. To start uh, the commission in work. Yo quiero sugerir en okay. cuanto nombre a ocho comisionados. I want to suggest as soon as you uh, name eight commissioners la comisión convoque a su primera junta. So the that the commission uh, calls for the first uh, meeting. Queremos acciones hoy, no dentro de un año. We want some action now, not in a year. Gracias. Thank you so much. Are you David Cano? Hi, good morning, my name is David Cano. 
I'm a resident of the 3rd District, and I'm here today to ask Councilman Bob Blumenfield to name a commissioner to serve in the City Health Commission. We all know that there are many public health issues in our communities. We know that we need commission to ensure that our taxes are well spent. The Health Commission is going to help decrease health disparities among Angelinos. Let's take charge of our Angelinos' health now. And thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Are you Mario Scott? Hi, good morning. Hold on good for, morning. Hold Hi, on for good. just a second. Next speakers, Leonard Balin, Stephanie Munoz, and Frankie De La Torre. Go ahead, sir. Hi, good morning. Hi, my name is Mario Scott. I live in the District 4. I'm very concerned about the slow response from some of the councilmen to appoint their commissioner to serve on the LA City Health Commission. What is troubling me more, what is troubling me more is that my own councilman has not appointed anyone. Mr. Rue, I respectfully ask you to pick your commissioner as soon as possible. This is the type of action that require a quick response. I really hope that you can nominate someone soon. Thank you. Good morning, Councilman, uh, Ms. Martinez. I am a resident of Arlita, and my councilwoman is you, Ms. Martinez. Um, I want to take the opportunity to respectfully ask you to appoint somebody um, to the Health Commission. I understand that at one point, um, the adoption of the commission was like delayed. However, th that is resolved now. There is no reason to continue the, this delay any longer. Um, please act now. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. And I believe I have appointed someone. Hi, good morning. Uh, are you Stephanie Munoz? Yes. Hold good. on for just a second. Mm -hmm. And Frankie De La Torre, Peter Hongsan. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, I live in District 12. Um, I'm here on behalf of my mother. Uh, she's an HIV positive woman. She's a Latina. She's been HIV positive for over 21 years. And this is really important for me as I've witnessed how difficult it is for her to access health care services provided by the county. So I really urge someone to um, appoint a new commissioner for District 12. Thank you for your time. Are you Frankie De La Torre? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Frankie De La Torre. I'm from the downtown LA District 14. I'm here today to ask Mr. Harris to, to appoint his uh, candidate to serve in the Health Commission. My community is struggling with many health issues. We need action now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, next speaker, Peter. Hansen, followed by Sharon Wilson and Jose Carmona. Good morning, Madam Council and uh, Council members. Uh, my name is Peter, and in my community, I live in a District 9. In my community, we have many health issues. People always say that no one dies of AIDS anymore, that we have many medications that improve the health of people living with AIDS, but that is not true. In my community, people continue to die from AIDS. In my community, people don't have access to health care. We continue to lack the much needed services. So please, Mr. Price, please don't delay the work of the Health Care Commission, and please name your nominee. Thank you. Uh, buenos dias. Mi nombre es Jose Carmona. ¿Necesita traducción? Sí, por favor. Sí. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Jose Carmona. Good morning. My name is Jose Carmona. 
Yo soy HIV positivo. I am H uh, VHI positive. Por los pasados 12 años. For the past 12 years. Y, y soy resi residente del Distrito 1. And I'm a resident of uh, District 1. Querido concejal Cedillo. Dear council member Cedillo. Hoy vine a pedirle. I came today. Que por favor. That please. Nombre a su representante. Name a representative. Para la comisión. Para la comisión de salud. For the health uh, commission. Que fue aprobada el año pasado. That was approved last year. Yo sé que usted y su equipo. I know that you and your team. De, de trabajo entienden las necesidades de la persona que viven en su distrito. I know that you and your uh, and your team understand the necessities of your uh, of the people that live under your district. El año pasado. Last year. Trabajaron con varias organizaciones. Last year you worked with several organizations. Para proveer servicios de salud. To provide health services. Y casa para las personas en MacArthur Park. And uh, housing for people that live in MacArthur Park. Estoy seguro que en, en esos meses aprendieron. I'm sure that during those months they learned. De la dificultad que existe para proveer cuidado médico. Of how difficult it is to provide uh, health services. Para los residentes. For the residents. Por favor. Ya nombre un comisionado de salud no hay. Please now uh, ne appoint a commissioner of health. No hay razón para la cual necesite más tiempo. Gracias por su tiempo. There is no reason to take more time. Thank you so Gracias. much for your time. Ma'am, are you Sharon Wilson? Um, hold on for just a second. I'm calling the next group of speakers. Donna Pierman and Mark Balatovich. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, good morning, um, commission members and uh, councilman um, Watson and his absent. My name is Sharon Wilson, and I've been living with HIV AIDS survivors for uh, 27 years. I'm a 13-year resident. Thank you. Um, my name is Sharon Wilson, and I have been living with uh, HIV AIDS for 27 years survivor, 13 years residents of district number 10. Uh, the one reason why I'm here is to um, talk about the, uh, the City Health uh, Commission. Uh, the City Health Commission is disproportionately impacting the lives of African Americans and Latinos. The council member's office estimated that in 2010, 25% of the AIDS diagnosis of, of the Latinos and 20%. Thank you, ma'am. You're out of time. Thank you. Are you Mark? Good morning. Bartolovich? Bar Bar yes, Bartolovich. Bartolovich. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mark and I live in San Pedro and Mr. Joe Buscano is my councilman. And I want to ask my councilman to, to name his cause, um, commission to serve in the health commission to, of the residents of San Pedro. Um, they need someone to re represent our interest in our commission. Please name someone soon. Thank you very much. Can we get back? Okay, go ahead, Donna. Okay. Uh, seriously, I am for John Walsh, who's right, for stealing the $6 million. It's horrible, and no video conferencing, too. Please, everybody, vote for an American black woman uh, running for U.S. Senate, Condoleezza Rice, a very intelligent woman. People look at all the scandals surrounding Hillary Clinton, her Clinton Foundation. Do we really want to have Hillary running the country? Hillary, Kerry, Obama, and liberal Democrats are not for the best interests of our country or our closest ally, Israel. Therefore, enemies, Iran, Cuba, or Russia, China, won't even see ISIS, ISIL, Boko Haram as terrorists or evil empires even, like looting, stealing, and arson are not protests. 
or protests, not riots. That's not right. Like Ben Carson, a great American black candidate, says American blacks and applies to other people too need to have opportunities to grow, not just get entitled and dependent uh, and and depend and to be dependable dependency. Like the liberal Democrats, Hillary and Obama, like people need to unite, not divide. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Next speaker, Calican. Is there someone by that name here? Calican? Is that you, sir? I guess I should have walked up on my hands and knees because you, the city council seems to like dogs better than veterans. How Mayor Garcetti and Planned Parenthood. Man, my salute seems so appropriate today. Serve and protect unless you're poor in Los Angeles. My landlord threatened to evict me because I wouldn't break the law. The housing authority doesn't care. My landlord constantly breaks the law, but the cops won't do anything about it. No justice for poor people in LA. Internal Affairs won't let me make a complaint. I tried to call Charlie Beck, the chief, but he's on a six-year vacation. I'm the most important person in the history of the world, soon the most famous person in the history of the world. I'm going to sue the city of L.A. into the Stone Age. You won't be able to afford to buy cop cars. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Wayne Spindler. Yes, Herman, Herman, being thrown out of the meeting. Shame, shame on her blessing. We were at the police commission meeting today, and Black Lives Matter showed up. And then they said, okay, what are, what are routine administrative matters? And the answer is Black Lives Matter. Then... Steve Soboroff gets up and everybody leaves the commission. So you got Steve Soboroff walking out on the meeting because he's a big chicken. And then you got Charlie Beck, who's on a six-year vacation because he wasn't at the meeting. He doesn't show up. He puts an assistant chief in the, in the chair. Of course he's black because he's got to look like he's not a racist. But Steve Soboroff is a racist. And Herb Wesson is a wannabe white racist. The next speaker is Antonia Ramirez. Thank you. This is a matter of principle. All of the movie industries and sporting events hire unprofessional, jealous, racist, hate mongery Latino, chango gangbangers, and wetbacks who are all thieves as security rent a cop outfits and construction crews to set up the events. Case in point. Los Angeles had a great, phenomenal Mountain Dew skateboarding tour August 15th and 16th on Broadway between 1st and Temple Street. The white guys who came in on Friday night, August 14th, to set up the skateboarding event meticulously, professionally collaborated every detail with a focused sense of pride for a successful societal entertainment event. Well, at the end of the event, um, which came in on August 16th, 2015, ESR, um, Event scaffolding resourcing uh, based out of San Antonio, Texas. Ziggy the boss uh, came, started harassing me and uh, being intrusive. And while they were taken down, they were loud and obnoxious, along with a Chango outfit, premier executive solution security. Fire them. Shame on the events. Next speaker, Omar Baldwin. Omar Baldwin, are you here? Omar Baldwin. He is not in the room, Madam Clerk. That concludes public comment. Mr. Price, do you have an announcement, sir? I do, uh, Madam President. Like uh, many offices, we've benefited from uh, student interns during the summer, and I just want to salute uh, three of my interns. It, uh, it's a sad time to, to say goodbye, but let me, uh, let me just uh, recognize Jungman Lee. She's a senior at Emory University. 
in Atlanta. She's going to graduate next year with a BA in anthropology and a minor in media studies. Uh, she uh, has a diverse set of skills, including uh, fluency in Korean and Spanish. Uh, she's been instrumental in helping our office on important policy issues and media relations, and she's been a real asset, and we're going to truly miss you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give it up. That's right. Next, we have uh, Nia Wall, another outstanding intern. She's currently attending UCLA, a double major in political science and sociology, uh, and she was certainly instrumental in helping us uh, organize the Central Avenue Jazz Festival this year. Not only did she provide much needed planning support, but she worked both days and nights. Uh, to the very end, and we appreciate that. Uh, she uh, has helped with policy issues and has uh, been uh, willing to fill in whenever we required and needed. Uh, most important, she's always on time, and so we appreciate you, Nia. Thank, Thank you. you. And then last but not least, uh, we have Kevin Duran, uh, who is a recent graduate of Occidental College uh, with a bachelor's in, uh, in um, politics, an emphasis in law and public policy, and a minor in philosophy, so he's gotten lots of good work out here in the new ninth. Uh, he's uh, our go-to guy for research, uh, whether it's on street vending or the shared economy, we could always count on him to, to come through. Uh, he's written uh, speaking points for me, and, and by, the sound of, uh, by the sound of this, he may have written uh, these, or no, not these, okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> he's taking part in briefings and was our, our go-to guy on the Special Olympics torch run. And so again, we just want to thank all of our interns who have uh, contributed invaluably to uh, to the office, uh, both in City Hall and in the district office, and you've all stepped up to the plate. Uh, we appreciate your, your leadership, we appreciate your energy, enthusiasm, uh, and we look forward to your continued success. Keep up the good work. Let's give it up for our interns in the new ninth. Thank you, Mr. Price. Madam Clerk, what's before us? Council has motions for posting and referral. Posted and referred. That clears the desk. Members, any announcements? Mr. Gokoria. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Uh, members, I'm pleased to announce that uh, my communications director, Ian Thompson, and his wife, Muna Kupti, uh, had a new baby boy, Zane Thompson, on August 13th. Uh, little Zane weighed in at seven pounds, eight ounces, and he was uh, welcomed by his brothers, Rami and Nassim, and uh, Zane and uh, Muna are doing well. I'm not sure how well Ian's doing. Uh, it might be a little bit questionable, but, uh, but the, it's a great blessing for the family and for our team to have uh, a new addition to the Thompson family. Great, congratulations, Ian. Any other announcements? Can we please rise for council uh, adjournments? Adjourning motions on my left. Seeing none, any adjourning motions on my right? Mr. Gokorian. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Uh, members, uh, Carl Johnson was a longtime resident of Studio City, a uh, great neighbor, a great friend, a uh, great community activist and leader, and notably um, one of our city's great artists. And um, he passed away uh, just uh, this week um, and left behind a great legacy of public art throughout Studio City. If you've driven through uh, down Ventura Boulevard or if you've gone to CBS Studios or if you've uh, witnessed the Radford Art Walk or been to Williker Park, you've seen the works of, of Carl Johnson that he uh, left behind through his artistry and through his generosity in giving those works to uh, these public places. He's left a, a, a terrific legacy of beauty uh, and of inspiration, and we uh, will very much miss him. He was my neighbor, uh, he was my friend, and uh, everyone in Studio City will very much miss Carl Johnson, but we will also for very many years uh, enjoy the legacy that he leaves behind to inspire us and to beautify our community. Uh, Carl is survived by his wife, Barbara, his sisters, Judith and Diane, uh, his nieces and nephews, Tiffany, Devin, William, and Tony, uh, and uh, Carl and Barbara's dog, Gracie, who uh, Carl was walking right up until the, the very end around the neighborhood. So um, uh, we will miss Carl Johnson, and I ask that the council adjourn in his memory. Thank you, Mr. Kikorian. Any other adjourning motions? Seeing none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.